Hi friends, David here from Learn a Christmas Lighting, and today I'm pumped, I'm excited to answer probably the top question we get as um, what some would say uh, the leading moving head vendor in Christmas lighting. Um, uh, you know, we definitely put the most thought into it. I think we probably are the biggest moving head vendor in Christmas lighting. Uh, maybe not. But regardless, um, we put a lot of thought into this and, and, and we answer a lot of people's questions. We help a lot of people with moving heads. And one of the questions that comes up a lot is, hey, like, I get snow. I get a lot of snow. Can I use my moving heads in the snow? And, and then I'm going to expand that to uh, a few more questions that that often are the source of this question and, and answer them all uniquely. Let's dive in. So moving heads in snow. So part of the issue with how we rate moving heads and how things are rated is generally, if you're looking for a moving head that's waterproof, you're looking at what's called the ingress protect protection rating. You see this all the time, IP65, IP64, IP this, IP that, right? Um, and the ingress protection rating is an interesting system. Um, it's generally self-assigned by the manufacturer, so you do have to take it with a grain of salt sometimes, like how much do you trust the person that's claiming these things? Um, and actually, let me just pull it up quick. Um, you know, if we go ingress protection chart, uh, just to show you guys uh, what some of these ratings mean, it can be really helpful. Okay, so basically the first number is basically your dust rating or solids. Okay, uh, most things are going to be six, right? And six for that first number means uh, dust is not going to get inside the unit. Okay, um, five is a little bit weaker, but sometimes still okay for weatherproofiness. Um, but eh, just avoid it. Um, six is better. <laughs> the, the, the second number is the one that you see the most difference in. Okay, let's look at it. So you have um, basically from six one even, you, you could claim that a fixture is waterproof. And I'm getting to snow, I promise. Okay, you could... You could claim that, right? Because it's protected against vertically falling drops of water for 10 minutes, okay? So that's not much. That's not going to work, right? But once you get up to four, basically, um, for example, like I think the Matos Designs S95 uh, uh, Festoon type lights are actually 6.4. Um, and I've got them sitting outside permanently. They're fine. Okay, but 6.5 is where things get interesting because that's where a water jet from, and this is key, from any position, so from up, down, side to side, any any position, um, is able to shoot um, this very specific pressure of water for a specific amount of time at the fixture at, at any angle. Okay, and so 6.5 is where uh, we generally say weatherproof starts. Now, if somebody claims that their moving head is 6.7, um, I would often challenge that. There are some on the market. They're, they're pretty pricey um, because that means that it's one meter under the water for 30 minutes with no issues and, and that you can do that time and time again, right, and get the same result. Um, and so, like, that's... That's asking a lot, and that's more than you need in, in Christmas lighting, right? Because we're not submerging things in water. So 6566, six, six, honestly, there's not a massive difference between them, um, just the, the pressure of the water being shot at them, etc. Okay, so th that's the first key is um, when we talk about ingress protection, when we talk about um, how these things are waterproof, um, it doesn't, the ingress protection ratings do not rate snow or ice or freezing temperatures. Okay, those are not part of the IP rating. Okay, so when it comes to snow, there's really no official rating system as to, um, you know, can moving heads be used in snow? And so when people ask that question, really they're asking two questions. You're asking two questions, okay? Um, the first is the obvious. Can I use the moving head in snow, right? Can it... The, actually, it's three questions, I guess. The second is, can the moving head be out in the snow, even if it's not running, um, and, and can it sit there? And the third kind of uh, part of that is, can the moving head be in very cold temperatures, right? Uh, can it be below freezing? Can it be, you know, significantly low, right? And so those are the questions we're asking here. 
Uh, so the first question, can moving heads be used in snow? The answer is, it depends. Okay. For example, just to pull a picture here, the kind of generic um, 380 watt type moving heads, and this is just a, a factory um, a factory image um, that, you know, these are on the market. Various vendors have sold them over time. Um, that I call them almost trash can type lights because that's what they look like. They're big, they're heavy, they're typically not very reliable over, over the few years. Um, but regardless, um, these are kind of hit or miss in the snow. Like, they're heavy enough that they can push snow out of their way, but I've heard of people having issues a lot of times in freezing temperatures, and, and issues that, in my mind, are completely unacceptable, like like the lamp won't strike when it's below, say, 30 or 20 degrees. Um, that should never happen. Um, if it's a good ballast and a good lamp, um, you should that that's just not acceptable. Um, but these are very inexpensive. Okay. Um, and so when they move, you know, they'll have the ability to push some snow out of the way and, and more importantly, kind of secondarily, they generate enough heat both at the ballast because those ballasts get very hot and at the lamp to do some of that melting, um, which is beneficial as well. Okay. Um, similarly, you know, if we go to the stage lighting market, like the Elation Proteus fixtures and ADJ has their uh, hydro fixtures. So if we go hopefully to the right page, we can show you those. The hydros are essentially just a less expensive version of the Proteus. Um, these are high-end professional grade fixtures that do, you know, cost more than people in Christmas lighting typically want. But the big benefit is they're heavy enough, they're built well enough, uh, and, and not to say that something that can't push snow isn't built well, but they're built really strong, that they're able to turn and move in that snow, okay, and, and it's not going to be a problem, um, even if it's an LED based and it's not generating heat, okay, uh, same for these. So, uh, so if you're going to use a moving head in the snow, the basic gist is um, the manufacturer needs to say that it's okay for you to use in the snow, okay, um, or else you shouldn't use it. Um, and the biggest concern there is just as snow builds up along the pan, the rotation side to side of this fixture, is it strong enough and is it built to be able to push that out of the way? Especially if you get like, like we often get, right? Where it snows and then there's some like freezing rain that makes it really hard, okay? Um, that makes it difficult. And if it's having trouble, if it can't move like that, uh, a number of things can happen. You can break or, or reduce the tension on the pan belt. You can break the, the motors and... Uh, you can, you, the motor can actually fail, um, et cetera, for the pan. And so that's that's the biggest concern there, okay? Um, with the Dominar Beam IP, that's kind of why we have the Dominar Lempo, which is the fixture in the dome, uh, for areas that have that higher snowfall because it's a, it's a smaller, lighter unit. Because of that, it's not going to push more than about two inches of snow out of its way. So we, we write in there, hey, you know, don't use this in high snowfall areas. Um, if it loses that pan tension because it was pushing against something, that's not covered by warranty, right? Um, and so that, that's important to know when you're looking at a fixture. Um, and so honestly, my best bet is like, hey, if you're not going to spend, you know, $5,000, you know, in that neighborhood for one of these, you know, stage lighting type waterproof moving heads that, that can push that out of the way. Um, then, and, and, you know, we're always pursuing as a company fixtures that are like these, but coming in maybe just a little bit lower to be a little bit uh, better for the Christmas light industry. We don't have any right now um, that have met our needs. Um, and that's why we recommend the domes. The domes get some flack, but they're honestly really good because the snow can accumulate on them, but you put a fixture that's hot inside of it so it can melt its own snow off. Then it can snow all at once. You'll never have a concern there, okay? Um, and so that's that's really great. Um, and so, um, you know, that's, you know, kind of our recommendation, basically. So on the snow factor, if snow needs to push out of the way more often than not, I would say your best bet, you know, even if you were thinking about, um, you know, one of those moving heads like these, even if you were going with one of those, 
I would not recommend using it in a high snowfall area because it's just not going to be good for it um, at the end of the day. Okay, uh, it's just not. Um, and and putting having a fixture in a dome, I think, is a better bet. Plus, they move faster. There's a lot of benefits there. Let's talk about cold conditions. Okay, so when you use a fixture in the extreme cold, there are really two things you have to worry about. Um, the first is um, condensation, okay? Because obviously, maybe not obviously, um, when it's cold, oftentimes you're closer to the dew point, right? And when something heats up in a cold environment, dew often forms upon it because the dew point's low, okay? And so um, what do you need to do about that? Well, your manufacturer of your moving head needs to treat that moving head for the cold. There are these um, sprays that they can do over the circuit boards, basically, that protect them, that kind of cover them over for condensation so that it won't cause corrosion, it won't cause problems. Um, I'm going to bet that the companies that manufacture these moving heads, I don't know this for sure, do not spray the insides of their fixtures with those sprays. Um, guess what we do? Um, our, our Dominars, they are sprayed for that. Um, they have that treatment done to their circuit boards so that they're able to work in cold environments, okay? Uh, the second is sometimes, depending on how the fixture is designed, the pan bearings can have issues with the way they're lubricated um, below freezing. Again, the Dominar BMIPs, the Dominar Lempas, I have personally used them in my house in, uh, what was it? It was like minus three degrees for a day or two last year, and I fired them up, I tested them multiple times, let them sit in between it, um, but they did amazing, they did great. We've also had people do um, sort of midterm testing, uh, you know, for a couple weeks, in upstate New York in the winter, and also in Wisconsin in the winter. And guess what? Same results. Um, no issues. Um, just that, again, if you have the Be My Peas and you're in a place with heavy snowfall, um, then you need to not run them if snow is built up around them. Okay? And so that's really the key when it comes to snow is you say, okay, can it clear the snow, right? Can it deal with those extra cold temperatures and the condensation? Um, and and is it going to be okay over the long haul, right? Is it is it designed for that? And so I hope this video helps you a lot. Um, you know, obviously we have the Dominar moving heads. Um, they're, they're the best in this industry, and we would love to serve you with those. But regardless, even if you're not into those, and we get the link at our store below, of course, um, even if that's not a good fit for you, I hope you use the information that I've shared today when you're looking for a moving head so that you get the right beam moving head for your Christmas light display. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. See ya.